behalf of my family. I joined this commission in 2010. But before I joined this commission, I was really going through financial challenges. Even to the extent, as a young lawyer then, before the end of the month, I would borrow money from my secretary to, in order to meet my needs in Abuja here. But to the, to the glory of God, somebody introduced me to this church in 2010. Since then, I have never had a better year today. In 2013, God blessed me with a wife. Exactly one month after the wedding, God blessed me with a car. One month, uh, one year after, uh, on our wedding anniversary, exactly one year, 27th of July, we dedicated our baby. Not up to a year again, my state uh, appointed me as a senior state counsel. My, sal my salary of 30,000 naira is now my tithe. To God be the glory. Give the Lord a loud shout. Service in the house of the Lord. Give him all this catalog of testimony. Praise the Lord. I am yet, I'm Raphael Emedo, and I'm here to appreciate God for his goodness upon my life and my family. And I also want to give God all the glory because I don't want to take him for granted. It happens during this prophetic double wonder agenda, which bishop, it was during the all night, which bishop was saying we should listen attentively and we should follow and run with it and we should go at the right time. So I keyed into those prophetic words and it was during the first week of the double wonder agenda. I went for an outreach and I came back and it was on Tuesday that a brother from my district called me and he said, do you want this car? Me and my wife, we have decided to hand over this car to you. I said, yes, sir. He said, okay, come and collect the car. So I just want to appreciate God. It's a Toyota space bus, and I give God all the glory. Give the Lord a loud shout. You will be the one to be called this week. Double portion. Heaven or earth? Amen. My, my name is Mr. and Mrs. Matthew Fuyebuzo. We really want to testify to the goodness of God for what God has done in our life. 2013, October 26th, to be precise, after our marriage, as it is natural, we are believing God for the fruit of the womb. And after a while, my wife took in and uh, we experienced a miscarriage. They recommended her for evacuation which he did. After the evacuation, mercy stopped flowing. Everything ceased. We are going from, from her hospital to another. And in the course of that, my wife registered for Wovi. And on the last day of the Wovi, after, the, after graduation, she got home and said, God, why, why? And immediately, her mercy started flowing. And also, we are still believing God for fruit of the womb. We are believing, believing. And in the course of time, there was also um, a post-service proof necklace at U Chapel. And there, God's servant, our mommy in the house, gave us an EDD. The EDD said, April 6, two weeks before and two weeks after. Either two weeks before or two weeks after. And in course of time, we go for scan, this, the, there was a big variation. But as we we're going for scan, scan subsequently, it was aligning. And uh, exactly as God's servant has prophesied, two weeks after the EDD, she gave birth. Even the process of that, there was a time... When okay, there was a time when we when the pregnancy was on, all of a sudden she saw blood, she was bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. She called a doctor, and the doctor said, the, asked, How long have you been bleeding? What is the nature of the, uh, of the blood? She described it and said, No, that baby will go. And uh, before you know it, there was a thick substance that went off from her. You, you, don't, you don't need to be a medical personnel to know that the, the, the baby is lost. And before then, my wife has written the EDD. I said, one of the nurses uh, uh, recommended... They actually, believe and God gave them a baby girl. Gave the Lord a loud shout for that miracle baby. Praise the Lord. My name is uh, Amin Samwa. I joined this commission 2003, Garden of Faith, Kaduna. Uh, to be precise, I lost my job February this year. And I've been... Believing God for another job. On Wednesday, I came here and a sister testified that she came to her sister 
that the sister gave birth and in the course of time she came here and God uh, blessed her with a job. And I now took it as a challenge. I went back. So that day I didn't go back home. I went to town. The following day I went to, to where I submitted my CV and lo and behold, somebody was also there looking for another person with a similar experience of mine. And the person gave me a job with uh, a salary advance of 160,000 naira. Thank you. Our God is a God of again and again. Begin to give him thanks for all this testimony because he is the doer. Thank you. A shout of thanks. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ten lepers were cured of their leprosy and on their way going back, one of them noticed a change and he said, I will not go back home, I must return to that man. And he returned with a loud voice. When they needed help, they cried with a loud voice. When he returned to offer thanks, he cried with a loud voice. When we make application, we cry. When we come for appreciation, let us also cry. This morning, i like somebody to forget himself. The way you prayed when you had a need, i like you to praise God the same way right now. Lift up your voice and thank him for all the blessings of the Lord in the month of June, in January, February, March, April, May, June. Thank him. From the depth of your heart, at the top of your voice, praise him, thank him for all of his blessing, all of his goodness, all of his glory, all of his beauty, all of his blessing. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Glorify him for protection, for safety, for provision. Thank him for prosperity, for abundance. Thank him for increases, for open doors. For favor, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Gloria, wo be lo ho se ke te grado ho se se. E branda ya mara ke tamrendo ko to tu se pe ya. Wo mindo ho se, wo mindo ho se, wo mindo ho se, wo mindo ho se. Praise him, thank him, praise him, thank him. Celebrate him. Wave your hand. Shout. Bless him. Glory to God. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him for multitudes that have been saved into the kingdom. Thank him and thank him and thank him. Give him the glory due to him. Ooh! We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you, we give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. Glory, glory, we give you morning be acceptable in the name of Jesus. May this act of thanksgiving bring about the perfection you desire in the name of Jesus. 
by reason of your thanksgiving today, there shall be no carryover of any situation into the month of July. As the month of June goes off never to return again, I decree that your difficulties go and never to return again. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Before you take your seat, I'd like you to pray again. Lord, let your word this morning bring my way. Change of levels. I want to enter into next levels. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen. Listen. Listen so you can pray properly. A word came for Joseph. Just one word. One word came for Joseph. According to Psalm 105, his word came in verse 19. And as his word came, he came out of the prison. From the prison to the palace. From the palace, he became a teacher of senators. Things change in quick succession. I'd like you to lift up your voice. Lord, send me your word that will bring me into my change of levels. Speak to him right now. Speak to him. Speak to him. Speak to him. Change in quick successions. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Father, send your word this morning to this your precious people and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' wonderful name. You like to give Jesus a big hand and take your seat. Heaven on earth. Wonders without end. That is my new realm and your new realm. And give it to someone next to you. That's my new realm and your new realm. Hallelujah. Our prophetic focus for the month of June, again, this being the last Sunday, is serving God peace. Will you say that with me, somebody? Serving God peace. Which also means, or can be put the other way around, it pays to serve God. Job 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve him, he will make them spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. You cannot make yourself. It is the service you render that moves God to make you. Jesus said to Peter, follow me, serve me, and I will make you. Matthew 4, 13, 4, 19, follow me and I will make you. It is your following that determines your making. And in your following, you are serving. So it implies it is in your serving God that your making becomes a reality. Luke chapter 5, from verses 1 to 6, Peter attempted to make himself a wealthy man from his fishing. He failed woefully until Jesus came and said, Peter, you are struggling. Give me your boat. Serve me with your boat. And as he gave Jesus his boat, Jesus made him. Give him your life that is wretched and he will turn it into fancy into a show for men to behold. Serving God is the key to the making of destiny. Serving God is key to the making of your destiny. 
We've had testimonies this morning again that proves that serving God pays. Somebody said, I came to this church in 2010, wretched, battered, as a young lawyer. I take money, borrowed money from my secretary to survive. But quick succession, as he engaged in serving God, now, according to him, what I earned as salary then is what I pay as tight now. Your story will change today. A decision to serve God is the turning point of man's destiny. A decision to serve God is the turning point of your destiny. Somebody said, I was engaged in soul winning. And I was called by a couple who said to me, we have this car gift to you. For serving God. Who told you you must gather money to buy a car? You can serve your way to possessing your possession. Shout hallelujah. For years now, I've not bought one car. At least the last seven, eight years, I don't have any business knowing how much they sell car. But for serving God, he supplies me with everything I need for time. I don't know where they sell clothes because I don't need to buy. I don't, need how, I don't know how much they sell shoes. Even socks, I don't buy. You cannot be serving God and be standing. Get addicted and God will give you additions. Get addicted and God will give you additions. Get addicted and God will give you additions. I don't know how much they say wristwatch, yet I don't lack. And I don't lack them in high quality. How? Just serving God. Get addicted and God will give you additions. Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. All these things, you'll be living in the realm of addition. Get addicted to step into realms of additions. The theme also forms our teaching series every Sunday, Serving God Pays, just for emphasis. Exodus 23, 25 to 26, you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water. Just one thing, procuring everything, doing one thing, procuring everything, doing one thing, procuring everything, serve the Lord your God, he will bless your bread and your water. Prosperity. He will take sickness away from the midst of the healthy living. Those are the two major things people are looking for. Nothing shall cast their young. That's what mothers and fathers are looking for, looking for their children. And the number of your days I will fulfill. Leave it to me. You will live long. You will live long. Verse 27. It went down the line to give you all that. He said, I will send my fear before you. And I will destroy the people to whom you shall come. That means I will, I will defend you. I will protect you. I will make all your enemies turn their backs unto thee. No one shall be able to confront you. I will send my hornets before you. Verse 28. I will send danger ahead of them. I will be punishing them. We shall drive out the Hevites. I will be driving people away from where you should occupy. How? Just for serving him. I don't struggle with men. I rule over men. I dominate everywhere I step into. The key. Thou shalt serve the Lord your God. Watch it. In the course of this week, by reason of your soul winning and other services, God will drive some people away and give you their position. Yeah. Hallelujah. Woo. It works. Serving God pays. You had another person testimony right to us today. He got to a company and he targeted his boss for salvation. He preached to the boss and the boss got saved. 
The number one thing he sought was not salary, but the soul of his boss. The boss got saved. Two years after, he said, sir, can I leave? The man said, you can't leave. I have to give you some gift. And he gave him estate, an estate. You know the meaning of estate? Estate means number of houses. To a young man who was not married. And gave him Range Rover Sports. To be riding free of charge. For what? For soul winning. Say with me, for soul winning. That's the way it works. Serving God pays. We had another testimony that was read to us on Wednesday. A man, a young man who was a Muslim. He said he was coming out of mosque one day. And some church members met with him. Shared the gospel with him. He gave his life to Jesus. Let me quickly read that to you. Twelve years affliction gone via kingdom stewardship and communion. My name is Ibrahim Amin Utamba. I was a Muslim from a strong Muslim family. Also an IT consultant and a graduate of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Ghana. It all started when I was coming from prayer at the mosque. I was stopped by some winners, brethren, on outreach and was ministered to. And there I gave my life to Christ on that day. He said, by the grace of God, since that day, I have keyed into the wonder double prophetic agenda declared by God's servant. And God has allowed me to win six souls to Christ. They are all Muslims and now have been converted to Christ. One new convert. Winning six new souls. There are many, many who have been old converts. They are as old as the church, but they are winning no souls. They have become elders in the church. They have become seat occupiers in the church. They even query people who share testimony. Oh, your testimony is too small. I mean, it's too much. Is it only you that is there? They have become moderators and referees. Nothing is happening to them. A new convert. I mean, if a new convert is saving six souls, then an old convert should be saving 60, 60, 60 souls. I will feel so ashamed and condemned if I do anything less than this young man. A new convert winning six souls within a short period of time. You should be ashamed. If you are there, you have not won one soul. You should even tell yourself this afternoon you will not eat. I won't eat until I get souls. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, moreover, I've been battling with an illness for 12 years. There is always a thick cloth of blood that usually comes from my brain. I have visited hospitals and spent money on drugs, all to no avail. I have to eat ice block to stop bleeding each time until I, when I heard about the healing banquet service, which I attended and partook of the communion. From that moment till now, I never experienced any sign of bleeding. I've been made whole. I have returned to give glory, all the glory, to the God of winners. Through you, many will return to give glory to your God. Yeah. Did you say loud amen to that? Yeah. Say with me again, serving God pays. Uh. Well, if it pays, what are the avenues for us to invest? Because without investment, there is no dividend. Without impute, there is no output. Without a price, there cannot be a price. What must I do? What must I do to engage in serving God and be entitled to my pay? Number one, again, prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting remains a major platform for serving God. Colossians chapter 4 verse 12. Epaphras. Who is one of you? A servant of Christ. A servant of Christ. How did he prove he was a servant? He was always laboring fervently for you in prayers. So there is the labor of prayer. That's what he was doing. Now, what are the things we have to pray for? Among several others. Number one, we must be praying for co-believers in the church. 
by now you know there are individuals in the church either in your service unit or in your cell fellowship or in the neighborhood members of the church who have certain needs very obvious needs maybe a child is sick in the family maybe the couple have crisis maybe that sister has been believing God for miracle marriage or the couple believing for miracle babies take it upon yourself and start praying for them Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 praying with all prayers and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints supplication for all saints supplication for all saints Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 bear one another's burden bear one another's burden and by that you are fulfilling the law of Christ you bear the burden of your co-believers in prayer you're praying for somebody in the church who is close to you has no job you shift focus from yourself and put it on others in James chapter 5 it says also that we pray one for another pray one for another pray one for another so change your focus from praying for yourself and pray for others who have needs pray for others shout hallelujah I say shout hallelujah. hallelujah chapter 5 verse 16 confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed for the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth more your prayer is so loaded it can help somebody in the neighborhood pray one for another look to your neighbor to your right and say I will pray for you Say it from the depth of your heart. Apostle Peter was locked up in the prison. And the church, the brethren, prayed for him. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. Peter the apostle was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Pray for the brethren. Job chapter 42 verse 10 Job prayed for his friend and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when when he prayed for his friends so your personal captivity remains unturned until you pray for your friends also the Lord gave him twice as much as he had before you see, when you pray for yourself you get one blessing when you pray for others you get double in return check your prayer list Everything focuses on you. Change the direction. Redirect your prayer. Pray for others like Job did. He prayed for his friends. Who are your friends? Your brethren in the church are your friends. Unfortunately, we get so busy discussing about others. You see that sister? I don't know why things are so hard for her. I think she's under a curse. I don't know. I've tried to examine her. I mean, I, I can't explain why calamities are just befalling her. Anyway, let's be praying for her. And it ends there. Instead of, look, I observe this sister has a need. Let's pray for her for divine intervention. And you pray the prayer genuinely from your heart. I have discovered the people you pray for you don't gossip about that you are gossiping individuals is an indication you are not praying for them turn the gossip to prayer turn the gossip to prayer the same time you are using for gossiping is the same time you can use for prayer number two area of prayer we must be praying for the reign of the word of righteousness Every Saturday, I've urged you, in particular, 
be praying for the services. And among other things, you pray for God to send down the rain of the word of righteousness. John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them by thy truth, because thy word is truth. Sanctify them. Let's be praying for the word that will sanctify us and cleanse us from uncleanliness that will keep the church clean. John 15, 3. John 15, 3, saying the same thing. We need the word of righteousness. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Let's be praying for cleansing word of God. Ephesians 5, 26. That she might be cleansed by the washing of the water of the word of God. Lord, sanctify your church. Lord, cleanse us from unrighteousness, from uncleanness by your word as is coming today. That's part of the things we are to be praying for. Shout hallelujah. That tells us about number one avenue for spiritual stewardship. Number two is reaching out to the lost. Reaching out to the lost. Which means winning souls for the kingdom and establishing them in the house of the Lord. Let me quickly emphasize here that reaching out to lost souls is a command of the Lord. It's not a choice. Every believer is commanded to reach out to souls. Every believer is commanded to reach out to a soul. Matthew 28, verses 18, all the way to 20. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All power in heaven and on earth. All power is given unto me in heaven and in the earth. And verse 19, he said, Go ye therefore. It's a command. It's not a choice. Every believer is commanded to go. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Go, 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 go. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Verse 17. Verse 21 and verse 23. And he sent his servant. He sent his servant. He sent his servant. A supper time. To say to them which are bidding, come for all things are ready. He sent his servant. Say with me, God has sent me. And verse 21. What more? When the house was not filled, so that that servant came and, uh, and shoot his Lord this thing. Then the master of the house, being angry, said unto his servant, Go out quickly, go out quickly, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in, go out and bring in, go out and bring in the lame, the poor, the maimed, the old, and the blind. And they, they came, the house was not filled. And in verse 23, the Lord said unto his servant again, Go out into the highways and edges and compel them to come in. Until when? Until my house is filled. Shout hallelujah. Go and bring them. Go and bring them. Let first service be filled. After first service, bring them. Let second service be filled. Go and bring them. Let third service be filled. Go and bring them. Let fourth service start and be filled. Very shortly, we are going to start the fourth service because the house is getting filled already in the first and the second services. It's getting filled already. Shout hallelujah. Until the town is empty into the house of God. Somebody's wondering, what are we after? Are we not enough? I mean, are we the only one in town? You need to find out the population of, this, of the town. Find out the population. You will suddenly discover that this church is not up to 2% of the entire town. What are we after? We should at least give a tithe of this city to God. One tenth of this city must enter into this house in Goshen. If you agree, say loud, Amen. We must pursue all the souls until all the drinking bars are shut down. Until all the bloaters are shut down. Until all the joints are shut down. Say amen to that word of prophecy. Until all the smokers say, I'm tired of smoking. Until all the drunkards say, I'm tired of drinking. Until all the drug addicts say, I'm not doing again. Those who agree with me are saying a loud amen to that. Very shortly, you'll be hearing money, more of such testimonies. A drug addict to say, I've stopped using drugs. 
a smoker will say, I've stopped smoking. And Harlot will say, I've left the brothel. I'm now in the house of God. Hallelujah. It's a command. But why do many believers fail to win souls? Number one, many for shame. For shame. They are not prepared to identify with Jesus. They fear that people may laugh at them. They fear that people may mock them. It is in the mockery that you get your making. There's a little clip that our drama unit did on that. If they have it, I'd like you to just indicate on the screen so we can listen to it. People will mock you before God will make you. The gospel will attract mockery. I have this interesting thing to let you know. When I gave my life to Jesus, people were mocking me. But today, all who mock me now beg from me. They now beg from me. I gave my life to Jesus before I became 16. I went through schools, and my classmates will be mocking. Some years after, two of them came to me, and they were telling me, we have given our life to Christ. I said, you came late. You came late. I've enjoyed all the blessing. And before they finish, they say, um, um, if there's any way you can help us, here are our, our CVs. I said, thank you. I will help you. You mock me, but I will help you. <laughs> I will help you. They filled form to see me. They filled form. They were mocking me before. Jesus does not drop people. Being identified with Jesus does not bring people down. Romans chapter 1 verse 4. It's 16. Romans 1, 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I'm not ashamed. If you are not, say with me, I'm not ashamed. I'm not hearing you very well. Say it one more time. <laughs> oh, all who mock you today for preaching Jesus will soon beg from you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 13. Let's listen to that clip. Brother, the Lord has been so faithful to me. See God on to I'm me. so grateful to God. Today, uh -huh. all the people I mean today in the market, all of them gave their lives to Christ. Which they do you now? You were supposed to different places. They drop your CDs. They want for job. Today they hunt for so you can't tell me say the Lord has done it too well. What did they do, you guys? Anywhere? My brother, it's not the issue of it's, it's not a waste of time. But an investment into, into God's kingdom for my blessings. And I believe that the Lord has gone out there to do it on my behalf. On all the things I have submitted my CV so far. You don't say that, normal. Hmm? No. You know, see, now only abnormal people they do this kind of thing. You don't have normal finish you. Abnormal again. No, you tell me how you want to make God they work for you. You don't apply God, ne? Excuse me, please. What does it have to Hello? Yes, good morning. Yes, Mr. Ma Mr. Matthew speaking. Yes, ma, yes, ma. Okay, ma, okay, ma. Thank you very much, ma. Thank you very much, ma. I appreciate it. Hey, guy. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what did it happen now? Thank you, Lord. Wait first. No, just even tell me, say, now, another soul, you don't win now, because it be so now. I just give you one dirty slap. Brother. One of the police have submitted my CV. Mm -hmm. They just called me to go ahead and pick my appointment later. Jesus. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Say with me. Serving God pays. He was mocking him and then they were calling him. He was mocking him and they were calling him. The job you are waiting for is waiting for you. As you follow after serving God this week, they will call you to take your miracle. Don't be ashamed. Let us go out. Hebrews 13 13. Let us go out without the gate and bearing his reproach. 
Let us go out. Give them opportunity to mock you, to laugh at you. God's servant Bishop Oedipo said when he was young, his father called him and said, what are you going to do this vacation? And he said, I will go about preaching from village to village. And the father said to him, that's what you will eat. That's what you will eat. And that's what he has been eating. Before his father died, the father was eating from it. All who mock you will soon eat from your table. Let's go without the gate and bear his reproach. Mark chapter 8, verse 38. He that's ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of him. He that's ashamed of me, and I will be ashamed of him. He that is ashamed of me and of my words. You can't speak because you're ashamed. In this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels. If you are ashamed of him, he will not listen to you when you call on him. Let's go without the gate. Bearing his reproach. Number two reason why people don't preach the gospel is for lack of commitment. They feel, what are we there for? What are the pastors for? What are the pastors for? I'm not a pastor now. The pastors are there to be preaching on our behalf. That's their job. There are people right now, as I'm talking, who collect hand bills every Sunday, but they don't even bother to distribute. It's inside their Bible. Or they have, they have album of all the hand bills. If you are looking for them, just contact them. You'll get it. Nothing concerns him. There are some, they pass the hand bill in front of me. He just closes his eyes as if he doesn't know what's happening. Nonchalance. Lack of commitment. Sense of irresponsibility. Let's say, shall we pray for souls? He said, we have been praying all this while now. If God wants to save them, he can save them. God has power to do anything. They say, bring people in your car when you are coming to church. He winds up his glass. Put up the music very loud. So that when they say, brother, Goshen. He said, Goshen for where? <laughs> you can't enter this car. This car is exclusively for me. <laughs> Shout Hallelujah. Let us show commitment to the kingdom of God. Well, I've told you a few of the blessings that come through this spiritual stewardship. Divine favor, divine honor, blessings on every side. Now, I'd like you to lift up your hand and receive grace. Lord, I receive grace to be a soul winner this week. Lift up your hand and receive the grace. I receive grace to be a soul winner this week. I receive grace. To win souls into your kingdom this week. I receive grace. I receive the grace. I receive the grace. I receive the grace. I will no longer be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. It is the power of God of salvation. I will go out to the street, to the highway, to the edges, to the marketplace. Everywhere souls are found. I will be there. Shout hallelujah. Now I decree multiple change of levels for you. What does next levels mean? Because we are in the banquet of next level right now. Next level means changes in quick succession. Positive changes in quick succession. Don't miss that. Quick succession. That means changes in rapid order. Before you recover from one, another one has come. And I decree that by reason of today's prophetic word, that will be your experience. Huh? Now, if you have your point of contact for business, for career, whatever, put it under your chair right now. Because the God who changes the level of this commission is going to give you a quick succession. A quick succession. A quick succession. If you are not looking for anything, call quick succession. Don't bother to pray. Because today, God is determined. The minimum he will give to you is twice quick succession in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Quickly put it down right there. Put it down right there. Underneath your feet. If you came with any point of contact, put it underneath your feet. You are going to be receiving such tremendous blessing. Some of you are operating in kiosk right now. Very soon, it will become a superstore. Some of you are operating transportation now. You are operating with one or two transportation. Very soon, you will buy large land in acreage to have hundreds of buses, hundreds of vehicles. Some of you are operating as estate developer right now. Now you are managing about five estate. Very soon, it will come in hundreds of estate. 
Say a prophetic amen, somebody. Some of you are having two employees right now. Very shortly, by reason of expansion, you'll be employing 50s or hundreds of employers or employees in the name of Jesus. If you believe all of that, wave your hand and shout, Lord, I'm looking forward to changes in quick succession. What does it mean, next level? Next level means sudden turn arounds. Sudden turn arounds. I like it if you have your prophetic word for the year. The personalized prophetic declaration, number 26, all the way to 31. It's all about this next levels. In 26, he said, the happenings in my life, all through 2015 and beyond, shall compel men to desire to follow me to serve my God. In number 27, it says, strange doors of favor shall be opening to me all through 2025. Expect that to happen from now. Unimaginable feats within unimaginable period of time shall become my testimony all through 2015. In 2015, I shall be a I shall be living far above what others may be suffering from. In 2015, the, by the power of light, I shall be on a flight into the realms of heaven. From now, you are going on that flight. Up. What does that mean? In a moment and in a twinkling of an eye, I shall be changing levels supernaturally. In a twinkling of an eye. In a twinkling of an eye, I shall be changing levels supernaturally. In a twinkling of an eye, I shall be changing levels supernaturally. Somebody lift up your hand and begin to declare right now. This is my next level. I'm changing levels supernaturally by the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm changing levels. I'm changing levels. I'm changing levels. I'm changing levels by the power of light. I'm changing levels by the power of light. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Every believer is ordained for continuous progress. Continuous progress. And I'm glad to let you know that you are due for it. Proverbs 4.18. The path of adjustment shall shine light that shineth more and more until the perfect day. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And we all, as we behold him. With open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Next level means changes from glory to glory. You are due for a change. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 13. You have compassed this mountain long enough. But you don't wait for next level, you press for next level. Philippians chapter 3, from verses 10 to 14. Paul the apostle said, I'm not, I'm not there yet, but this one thing I do. I press, I press, I press. Verse 13, I press, I press, I press. Philippians 3, 13. This one thing I do, I press. So you have to press your way into your next level. You press your way into your next level. Say with me, I'm pressing. Say it again, I'm pressing. Say it again, I'm pressing. How do you press? I show you two, three things quickly. And then we begin to pray. Number one, you press, first of all, by appreciating God for how far he has taken you in life. Appreciate God for where you are right now. Give quality thanks to God for how far he has brought you. Murmuring will lead to murder of destiny. Complaining will complicate your matter. This is June. I've not seen anything. With all the prophecy from God's servant, I've not seen anything. Don't complicate your matter. Look around you. You will discover that even though you are not where you want to be, you are not where you have always been. You are not where you used to be. You are not where you used to be. Something has moved forward in your life. Don't complain. Give thanks to God. Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 19 to 31. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make melody. There will be celebration. And as they are thanking me, I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will change their levels and I will glorify them. They shall not be small. 
as they offer thanks thanksgiving is number one key for change of levels joseph even though was in the prison never complained never murmur always smiling always glorifying god and suddenly is what came habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 to 19 although the fig tree does not blossom and there'll be no fruit in the vine everything is failing yet will i rejoice in the lord verse 18 i will join the god of my salvation and what will be the outcome verse 19 he will make my feet like an high speed he will become my strength he will make me to walk upon my high places he will change my level raise your hand and say father i thank you one more time wave your hand and say father i thank you number two what do you do to change levels by obeying god's commandment obedience compliance to god's word deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the lord your god to observe and to do all his commandments which i commanded this day what will be the result that the lord your god will take you to your next levels he will set you on high above all the nations of the heart he will take you to the next level and this blessing shall come to you and overtake you if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord your god obedience is key to your next levels number one appreciation number two obedience and one of the things he commanded us to obey is the commandment to win souls commandment to win souls commandment to win souls you have heard that earlier he said go ye into all the world go 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 and compare them to come go john 15 16 he said you have not called me i've called you i've ordained you that you should go and win souls and bring forth fruit and that your fruit may abide and as a result whatever you shall ask the father in my name he may give it to you shout hallelujah so may i appreciate god say also i will obey his command number three always speak forward speak upward job 22 29 when men are cast down you shall say there is a lifting up don't say what they say otherwise you will remain at where they are i'm not down my business can't be down change of government cannot affect my business watch what you say don't speak like them otherwise you'll be leveled like them when men are cast down when the economy is down i shall say there is a lifting up so you speak your way to your next level you speak your way to the top things are working for me this church is growing supernaturally I cannot lack any good thing my family is doing great my children are wonderful everything is moving forward for me i don't lack money i don't lack any good thing speak your way forward speak your way upward and finally number four take advantage of prophetic presence to break forth into your next level prophets are agents of changing our levels Moses came as he spake, Hosea 12:10, the level of the children of Israel supernaturally changed. They became free, they became owners of silver and gold, they became possessor of great things. They marched through the Red Sea. They entered into the promised land. How? By a prophet. In the days of Ezra, the people were stagnated. In chapter 4 verses 1 to 23 everything was stagnated and then in chapter 5 the prophets rose up and they began to prophesy chapter 5 they began to prophesy they began to prophesy Ezra chapter 5 as they prophesy the people rose up to build as I speak this prophetic word over your life your story must change I say your story must change everything stagnated must move forward I thought somebody saying they loud amen to that. Yeah. With them were the prophets helping them. With them were the prophets helping them. With them were the prophets helping them. Lift up your hand. I decree full help for you today. Yeah. I decree full 
scan help for you today. I supply to you this morning the wings of this commission. As you hang on these wings, which I represent today, wherever this ministry is making news, you will be making news as well. Huh? Whatever cannot bring this ministry down will never be able to bring you down again. As this ministry is scaling new heights, I see you also scaling new heights. Huh? Raise your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Just one minute. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm scaling heights. I'm climbing up. I'm scaling heights. I'm climbing up. Things are changing for me. Things are moving forward for me. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. It is done. Are you excited you came this morning? Give God a big hand and take your seat. Please get seated. Quickly, you are here this morning. Somebody invited you. You got an ambulance and you came. Maybe nobody invited you. You just felt you should come. Whatever way you came. The big question for you this morning is, are you in touch with God? You have come to church. But have you come to Christ? Are you born again? Are you on the same page with God? Do you have the peace of God in your heart? Are you sure if Jesus comes now, you will go to heaven? If your answer is not positive, there is a chance for you this morning. There's an opening for you this morning to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Somebody's wondering, I'm a bad person. If this pastor knows how bad I am, he won't ask me to come and give my life to Jesus. The good news for you this morning is that Jesus said, whosoever comes to me, I will not cast out. I will not. He doesn't throw away anybody. If you think you are bad before men and before your eyes, you are good to him. He wants to repair your life. He wants to make you good. He wants to do everything for you this morning. He wants to give you rest of mind. He wants to give you a lifting in your life. Wherever you are, you know you have not given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'd like to ask you to gently stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Wherever you are standing, or wherever you are seated, stand to your feet. From the gallery, from any wing. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be born again. I want to say yes to Jesus. Stand up right now. Stand up right now. Stand up right now. Somebody is seated there. Is that where? I wish the pastor no. I don't drink. I'm not a drug addict. I don't do bad things that other people do. I live a neat life. Look, your righteousness is as filthy rags before God. Well, start coming. Some people are already coming, so I can't stop you. I can't stop you. You want to give your life to Jesus? Quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. Quickly come. Church, clap your hands very loud as we receive them. Clap your hands as we receive them. I thought someone is more excited in the church for these wonderful souls that are getting saved. Can you see how God is answering your prayer? Can you see how God is responding to your soul winning? Can you see how God is saving souls? See them coming in their large number. If you are still coming, hasten yourself. We are about to close the service. Come on church, get more excited. Give God the glory so he can do more. Give God the glory so he can do more. Give God the glory so he can do more. While they are still coming, I'd like you to know the books of the month available for you. Please pick them as listed in the announcement sheet. We have this teaching, very special teaching, leaping to your next level. This teaching on CD will be a blessing to you. You will never regret listening to it. It's powerful, relevant to what we are doing today. Leaping to your next level. You can take a leap. You can move forward. The miracles are real. Serving God pays. It is already blessed for the refreshing of your soul. You are blessed as you do that. Will ushers please help me circulate uh, the announcement?